Well, I have a, a lot of thoughts because I was one of those people there a lot trying to help work through and figure out how do we do this successfully. And it's true that uh, in many ways the Occupy Amsterdam didn't take advantage of political experience, but I also think it's the case that those with a lot of people with political experience abandoned the project when we most needed them. And we, yeah. our communication system broke down, our, our general assemblies, groups were functioning in working groups and doing all kinds of things, but the general assembly became hyper focused on the camp uh, daily management, as you might expect. But also, those were the times when, we, when the, the Occupy most needed people with, the, with political experience to attend and to put in the, the commitment to say, even though this is hard and frustrating because there's all these elements that are problematic and people that are here for the first time that have never been politically active and, and aren't always then, in that sense, the, the contributions aren't always productive at first, that uh, that was when when we, we dropped the ball in terms of people continuing to support and attend. And a lot of people were there in working groups and not in the general assemblies. And, and in my mind, what happened is the internal communication broke down so badly that when the, the time came for the, the mayor's deadline and we've got to do all of these things, the assemblies were no longer functioning as a, as a, a real way for people to communicate. And so people that were concerned about different things, some people started to just take it into their own hands because they understood that the, the assemblies weren't accomplishing what they needed to accomplish. And so I, I take the point and I agree about all of the sort of problems in many ways that you're, you know, that you're suggesting, but I'm also saying that this was a process where this move, this effort got out of the traditional activist communities and into a broader set of uh, a broader community of people without experience, and that's when we really, really needed people to step up and participate and bring that experience. And we still need people, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Wake up. You're next. Yeah, I, th I think you're totally missing the point at all. <laughs> I, w I was there in the beginning, and I must say, uh, at one point, I also felt a little bit uh, a distance between me, myself, as a squatter, as an activist, in maybe the, the more traditional sense, let's say. But I think the potential and mm -hmm. the, the strength of Occupy was, for me, uh, the way in which all kinds of people, with every background, from, from whatever, you know, from a working class people, squatters, to mm -hmm. uh, maybe bankers, they could all decide to talk about what, what democracy is. And this naivety was maybe uh, made it bound to, to, to be destructive or something that would not work in the end, but that's the, the, that's the beauty of it. I mean, we've been talking about squatting a place and then we were thinking like, yeah, but then you politicize the whole, the whole Occupy in the sense that and then there is sort of a squat and then the squatting movement is Occupy and I mean, of course, that's what happened. Well, that's that's partially what happened. So you could also say it's good that the squatter the squatters were you know maybe they should should have been even more at a distance. It's not about success of of the success of Occupy is in my opinion not in a sort of you know uh, um, a well structured uh, uh, anti thing. I think this is this, this discussion is the success of Occupy, right? Well, no, it's about Scotland. It's the success of Scotland. Yeah. Go ahead, you're next. I have a question, just to maybe try to bring it back to the uh, discussion about habits and institutions, <coughs> or maybe governmental institutions. I think how to deal with uh, violence within collectives. I think that uh, also, uh, was also a problem um, for Occupy, and the squatters don't have an answer for this at least. So I think this is like, if, you know, how to organize that, uh, yeah, C common, <laughs> collectively, and without slipping into, you know, state institutions, which we often criticize, uh, order groups, um, investigative groups, um, police, uh, so I think this is maybe, uh, yeah, that's what is something that I would like to ask. <laughs>
I think that is uh, like a challenge. You're asking us how we would solve the problem of violence in the The discussion earlier was mm. about how you know what's the difference between habits becoming institutions mm. or states yeah, yeah, and, when, yeah. and when people don't comply to the habits that have become Yes, and I common. agree also that yeah. it's maybe not just yeah. about external threats. Mm. So we forget No, it, it very definitely it. wasn't just about external threats. No, but I think it, it was exacerbated. Internal. It was internal, but it was exacerbated by. It was a bouncing back and yeah. forth. It was internal and external threats. But um, sure. yeah, uh, do we? I I I I, th I think it's interesting also to think about this habit thing. And and uh, but I would rather relate it to the general assembly and the communication system that at a certain moment fell apart somehow. And then I, I, I like myself, I really had the feeling that there was. Um, um, that that this habit it was kind of like an institutionalized like it was, uh, um, format and um, um, but because it it was the only fixed thing but it it didn't develop enough in order to keep people attracted so I thought also like this habit is really nice this ceremony is really nice but at a certain moment everybody got really exhausted <coughs> to be part of it so they they people stepped out. And, and I think it had a lot to do with that there was no experiment, that there was, people were not experimenting with this, uh, um, with this format, because this format at a certain moment was, was, was not uh, um, functioning anymore, but at the same time it was like the only bounding factor, so people were kind of like holding onto it all the time and, and even though it was very clear that at, this, at, the, at, this, at a certain moment there were only seven people attending these general assemblies. Um, so this was an institution within Occupy, like this general assembly, but then there was no experimentation. So I, 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 I was also thinking about this habit, like is it good or not? And, but I think habits are really good, but you also have to uh, con <coughs> constantly question your habits and, and, and try to transform it to other ones if, if things are not working anymore. But in relation to violence, I think, I, I, I think it, like we didn't, we, 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 like Occupy Amsterdam didn't come to any conclusions about that, but there was a lot of experimentation within dealing with violence. And I thought that was actually very interesting. You had the peacekeepers and, and, and among the peacekeepers constant discussions about uh, de uh, tactics, uh, uh, tactics of de-escalation and, uh, and other people were more for uh, verbal violence or physical violence. And so you have, and, and, and how, to tr how to rely upon each other and can you drink when doing peacekeeping and being de-escalating while you're drunk? And this kind of, <laughs> um, but it, it, it was, I, but I thought, it, I thought it was quite interesting to, to be there at certain nights being a peacekeeper and also trying to figure out what my position would be. And I think everybody had different answers to this question. For me, it, I, 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 it reminded me, I'm not a mother, but I, I felt like maybe, like if I can do peacekeeping, maybe I should kind of like define myself as a mother, as a mother of the camp, like as the first authority that you meet, which is, which is a, a, an authority that is based on affection, or at least in my experience. And then, um, and 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 she would set rules for, for me, huh? Or a father for that case? Yeah, or you, a father. Could be a mother. Yeah, I would yeah. be a mother. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, and, and uh, I thought that was, or it was very clarifying for me because I thought it was a really difficult position to be in because I, of course I related to state institutions that you already know like policing. So and then and and by defining it differently, calling it me being a mother, it's, it's kind of like, okay, I can live with that kind of authority <laughs> because it's based on love and caring for each other. But it probably provides yeah. the answer to the question of can you be drunk and do the job? Because the answer is <laughs> probably no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. okay, would, so here and then you. I would like uh, speaking Dutch uh, because my English yeah. is not exactly, I, I'm sorry about that. No, no, can, 
Je kunt het translate, right? Ah, ja, ja, ja. Oh, ja. Uh, ik kom zelf uh, van de uh, linkse uh, beweging. Ik kom van de left movement. Uh, in Iran, daar wij hebben de basis voor de revolutie van 1997 in, in, opgebouwd. In Iran, waar we veel geweest voor de revolutie in 1979. 1979. Uh, in die tijd, wij dachten dat voor ons was geen beweging. Wij gaan de beweging uitvoeren. We thought at this time that there wasn't, there was no movement that we were going to discover the movement. Dat gaat iedere generatie doen, en dat is juist om te doen. Yeah, every generation is going to do that again, and it's the right mm -hmm. thing to do. Alleen achteraf, wij hebben 200.000 mensen in bloedbad kwijtgeraakt. Only looking back, we lost 200.000 people in a bloodbath. And 800.000 mensen in gevangenis. And 800.000 people in jails. Als jij boos wordt hierover, if you're going to be angry about this, and she's pointing at the bloke who was at the door being angry. Yeah, ik was boos, ik was boos op ons leven dat wij gaven. Alle kameraden die kwijt raakten en uiteindelijk een dictator nog groter hadden we teruggebracht. I was angry at the comrades we lost. The, we hebben zoveel mensen kwijtgeraakt. The number of people that we lost and the, at, at, ultimately the huge dictatorship that we gave them birth to. Mijn leerpunt was in Nederland. The thing I learned was that in the Netherlands, een land die vier toch jaar heeft geprobeerd om mensen apolitiek te vormen. A, a country which has tried for 40 years to make people apolitical. Yeah. <laughs> is dit een fantastische start? This is a fantastic beginning. <laughs> maar dit zegt, yeah. dit zegt, <laughs> maar dit zegt dat de leerpunten moeten exact uitgehaald worden. Half uurtje over uh, Occupy is niks. <laughs> but, but what you says is that we have to, uh, we have to take the, the points of learning out of this. And half an hour about Occupy is nothing. Wat ik geleerd had in Iran was eerst voordat jij de standpunten neemt van het jouw enthousiasme oudere mensen die nog leven in protest te horen. Before you, what she learned first. That's too long a sentence. What what she learned of of Amsterdam is of Amsterdam of Iran of Iran is to. To learn no. the lessons of the generations before, before <laughs> if they are not finished with the with the painting, if, if they haven't finished with the fight, omdat meeste mensen gaan stoppen met de strijd en gaan zeggen, hou maar op, dit heeft geen zin. Most people are going to say to you, stop struggling, stop fighting. It doesn't make any sense. It's no, there's no point to it. Ik vind dat dat hier de meneer die trots op is, mag je zijn. Dit was prachtig. Be proud of. Maar één ding is belangrijk. Esthetiek heeft een grote rol in deze tijd en toekomstige Be aware that the aesthetics have a huge role at this moment and in the future. Ik onderzoek op dit moment relatie tussen ethiek en esthetiek in informatie en netwerksamenleving. En ik kom continu die toe. De relatie tussen esthetiek en ethiek. En esthetiek? Ja, ethiek en esthetiek. Informatie en netwerksociëteit. Dit is het belangrijkste leerpunt. Ik ben met jullie. Most important lesson and she's with us.